Prince Edward Island about a decade ago, I was a struggling comedian that nobody's ever heard of. But now that I'm back on Prince Edward Island, I'm still a comedian that nobody's ever heard of. Hi, my name is Justin Shaw, and I'm returning to Prince Edward Island to explore storytelling and identity in this wonderful corner of the country. I'm gonna be talking with writers, mentors, family, friends, maybe even an enemy or two, while I'm working on a brand new story in this little place I call home. So come join me on this journey across this gentle aisle while we prove that while this is Canada's smallest province, when it comes to storytelling, it has the biggest heart. I'm glad to be home. I'm Prince Edward Island. Glad to be back because I, I live with my, uh, my wife in, in Hamilton, Ontario. And uh, I moved there because I always wondered what it would be like to live in a Grand Theft Auto video game. It's <laughs> a frightening city. Uh, but I'm originally from Cardigan, Prince Edward Island. And it's, uh, it's, it's challenging to sound tough in Hamilton when your hometown's named after a sweater, you know? <laughs> I don't give off that imit in intimidating, but I can't even say it. I can't even say intimidating. But it's, uh, it's good to be home in, uh, in Kings County, uh, where I'm originally from, now here telling you guys stories in Charlottetown. But in Kings County, I love telling stories about out east there because a lot happens, a lot more happens out there than I think people realize. You see, Kings County, as you may know, it is home to a large population of Amish people. Did you know that? Yeah, and I tell people that in Hamilton all the time, and they got some interesting responses. They go, oh, you lived in a, an Amish community, did you? You ever hook up with an Amish chick? <laughs> you can't. You can't. <laughs> you can't hook up with an Amish chick. You can't. You can't have a one Mennonite stand. I, you know. <laughs> that joke's usually a grower, not a shower. So thank you. <laughs> And how long, uh, how long have you been in this part of the world? We're located East Jesus Nowhere, 10, 12 minutes from Montague, in a little spot called New Perth. They call it New Perth, established in 1813. Yeah. You've been here since then, I suppose. <laughs> Close. Yeah. Uh, we've been here for 40, 43 years. That's a long time. It is. It is. Someone asked you if you'd ever lived or worked anywhere besides PEI. Uh, what was it you said to them? No. No. This is it. PEI. Yeah. They wanted to know why I didn't. And I said, well, if you're born and raised in the best place in the world, why would you want to leave? What makes it the best place in the world, you think? <sighs> Just look around. How many horses you got in the barn these days? I got six here right now. Six? What made you get into the breeding aspect? The lack of horses around. When the Amish moved here a few years ago, I become friends with them and, and uh, with one guy, and that's we kind of work back and forth together, and we raise the same breed. Mm -hmm. how, long, uh, how long have horses been in your life? All my life. Yeah. Why horses? What is it uh, about them that uh, makes you want them to be part of your life? That's a good question. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I've never once worked in the barn with you. What do you think that's about? What do you mean what it's about? What do you think? Why do you, what makes, why, why, why haven't I done any of this stuff? What, why do you think? Well, like I said, it, it's not for everybody. It's hard work. Yeah. Uh, some people think it stinks. Mm. Some more people think it's, you know, it's just around the farm. Like the, they don't, the smell doesn't mean anything to them, which it doesn't to me. What advice would you give to someone who's wanting to raise horses? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Take up golf. Yeah. Huh? You never golfed, did you? You always no. went for the horses. It's hard work, but. It's worth it. And my work's a little bit different. What a little, I, yes. How would you describe the work I do? 
how do, would I describe it? To someone who runs into you at the grocery store, let's say. What's Justin say, doing? Yeah. The same as I always told him. Yeah. Justin's doing just exactly what he wants to do. He's enjoying himself doing it. And it's a totally different aspect of my own life, mm -hmm. but not that much different because I've always done what I wanted to do. If somebody can't make you do the likes of this, yep. you either you either want to do it or you don't want to do it. Well, that's what I tell them about yourself. You're out there doing does it work? I don't know. Who would have thought a stand-up comedian slash long-winded storyteller and a humble horse farmer in Eastern Pete? Yeah, I would have common ground. So I'm home here for the next little bit, and I'm working on a a story that I've been writing that's about specifically about Kings County. It's about the 70 mile yard sale. Have you ever been to that yard sale? Yes, we have been. Yeah. Did you buy anything you remember? Oh, I did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. We struck it. We left one day, and your mother, she she had to have a bicycle. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Is it yeah. that blue one up there? It is. Yes. What you spend on it? I'm not sure. No, <laughs> well, mom. Using this story of a yard sale, it's a fella coming home to get a family heirloom that gets lost in the yard sale, and he's running all over to, to find it. He's learning more about his family as he, uh, as he does it. And I wanted to tell this story just to put a bit of a spotlight on Kings County, because often when you hear stories told about Prince Edward Island, it's often Hannah Green Gables or something with Stomp and Tom Connors, very... very very mainstream kind of understanding of what it is, but it's the little things that I think people are really drawn to in PEI that uh, make it what it is and make it a, a special place. The art of storytelling has, has been, that's part of the Prince Edward Island. That's been the same in PEI as raising horses. Mm -hmm. And that there is an art to it, partially off the story, and, and uh, the biggest part is on the delivery, like you know mm -hmm. how that story is told. So it really doesn't matter what it is, it's just the way, you know, that it is told. Fair. Um, hopefully don't get bored to death. <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> well, I know you got all kinds of things to busy yourself with. You yeah. probably gotta go make supper for mom and <laughs> gotta clean the house for yeah. her. I know you're breaking your back. I know. Doing it and you gotta keep an eye on, on these beautiful beasts, making sure they're not getting in any trouble, but Thanks for uh, thanks for your time and thanks for sharing your your wit and wisdom and uh, thanks for not talking nasty about me behind my yeah. back to the people at the grocery store. <laughs> All right, sir. I love you too. Yeah. But anyway, he's he's on the couch asleep and I'm tanned and I'm terrified. He goes, Dad, Dad, he goes what? And I go, there's a bat in the house. And he goes, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. He gets up, goes to the kitchen. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> goes into the pantry. I'll never forget the next few things that he did. I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. He went to the pantry, pulled out an entire roll of paper towel. He wraps the paper towel around his hand. <laughs> Looks at the bat, he catches it with his bare hands, with perfect eye contact, he looks at me, crushes the bat with his hand, opens the door, and throws the bat out of the house, slams the door, looks back at me, he was in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm remembering the story as I'm introducing my dad to my now wife, and he goes, you know, I love you, son, which is a terrifying way any parent can begin any conversation. I love you, son, but now that you've married her, she's, in a legal sense, now my daughter. So if you hurt her, <laughs> you're the bat. <laughs> There will be no paper towel, so... <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>